After a successful military operation in North Africa, a group of German soldiers is sent to Italy to get some rest. From there, they are moved to Stalingrad as part of Paulus's 6th Army. Among other military personnel, Lieutenant Hans von Witzland, Obergefreiter Fritz Reiser, and Unteroffizier Manfred Rohleder are sent to the Soviet Union. Once in the vast expanse of the Soviet Union, the military behaves as if they are at home. They already share the land in front of them and consider the people working in the fields their employees. They are confident that they will soon return here to harvest the wheat the Soviet laborers have sown. Only Lieutenant Witzland is not carried away by the general spirit. He writes a letter home telling of his business trip to Russia. Arriving in Stalingrad, the German troops faced a harsh reality. The soldiers who fought before them were wounded and demoralized. For them, the battle for this city turned into a horrific massacre, from which it was impossible to escape alive. Witzland notices one of the officers beating a Russian prisoner and stands up for him. He is punched in the face for this, and then rushes to Hauptmann Haller to complain about the officer's actions. Haller only laughs in response. Complaints to a higher authority were also fruitless. Soldiers and officers were brought together to inform them of their specialness. They believed their sacred quest was guarded by God himself. Only the first battle, in which Witzland participates, disproves this assertion. The Russians fight desperately. They shed blood for their homeland, so every inch of Soviet land is given to the Germans with great difficulty. Many German soldiers caught in this meat grinder try to escape. Others start shooting at their people out of fear, and when one of the Russians comes out of the room with a burnt head, the young German guy who killed him confessed that he shat his pants. When the first battle ends, the soldiers and officers gather together. They listen to Hitler's radio broadcast, in which he announces the imminent capture of Stalingrad. For him, it is only a matter of time. The Fuhrer does not doubt for a second that he will win. At a halt, Reiser meets a boy named Gega Müller. He is in shock from the last battle and tries to comprehend everything that has happened. But Reiser advises him to stop thinking. This is the only way to keep his sanity. At night, when the Russians tried to carry their wounded away from the battlefield, the Germans opened fire on them. Upon learning the reason for the firing, Lieutenant Witzland, contrary to instructions from above, orders not to fire on the Russians. He finds a man who speaks Russian and asks the Soviet soldiers not to open fire. Then the Germans can take their wounded as well. To make the Red Army men believe him, he leaves the cover. The Russians come out to meet him. One boy also runs out to the wounded. Reiser came out with the lieutenant. Once near the Soviet soldier, he exchanged food with him. Just as the enemies decided that they would part without casualties, one German soldier, Edgar Emigoltz, fired at the Russians. Shooting began. The boy tried to attack the enemy but was disarmed and then dragged away by the Germans. He behaved nonchalantly until he saw the picture with the rabbit. He started to tell that he had rabbits too. The boy also said that the Germans had poor shoes and that they would be cold in winter. Roloder gets a letter from home. His wife tells him that she started dating the French war prisoner. She decided to inform her husband that she was leaving him herself. Roloder determines to take revenge for his wife's betrayal on the Russians. The Soviet soldiers go on the offensive. The Germans lose communications, and a small unit escapes through the sewers. Witzland, Reiser, and Emigholtz go with flamethrowers. As they light their way, they see the corpses of German soldiers. They get separated, and Witzland goes into the wrong tunnel. He gets lost and accidentally meets a Russian girl, Irina. A difficult situation arises. If the lieutenant kills her, Irina's fellow soldiers will show up and shoot him. If Irina screams, he will have to shoot her. In the end, they both die. But Irina decides to get the German out of the sewers. In return, she asks that he promise to let her go. When the two go out to the sewers, in which many bodies are floating, Irina pushes Witzland there and escapes. He is helped out of the water by his fellow soldiers who come to the rescue. However, it was not possible to get out of the sewers without casualties. Emigoltz hurt his leg. He had to be manhandled. The Russian fighters follow in the footsteps of the German soldiers. Yet the Germans manage to find their way out, discover a hospital, and bring Emigoltz there. At gunpoint, Reiser forces an attendant to save the life of a fellow soldier. But he only manages to give an injection. Emigoltz dies in agony. For Reiser's misdeed, all the soldiers are arrested and sent to a punishment battalion. Even a conversation with the general does not remedy the situation. Once in the penal battalion, Witzland, Reiser, Roloder, and Mueller take care of clearing the road. December came, and the German troops were in desperate condition. The soldiers in the penal battalion were starving, freezing their limbs off, and slowly turning into savages fighting over food. The penal battalion is then sent to the front, where Witzlin meets with Hauptmann Hermann Musk. The moral spirit of the soldiers is off. They are ready to surrender, but the command tells them to fight. In another battle, the Germans encounter Russian tanks. In a difficult fight, they manage to gain the upper hand.
However, their life did not get any easier. Through the snow-covered plain, they dragged the heavy weaponry to the location of the German positions. The Germans were taking a lot of captive old men, women, and children from the Russian villages. They burned their houses. At some point, there was nothing to feed the prisoners, and they began to shoot them. As a firing squad, Hauptmann Haller chose men from the penal battalion, among whom were Witzland and his comrades. If they shoot, they will be rehabilitated in the eyes of the commanders and will get back their shoulder straps and military rank. The lieutenant flatly refused to shoot, for among the prisoners was the boy they had captured in Stalingrad. Reiser was of a different opinion. He was sure that by killing these Russians, he would make their lives easier. After all, they too were suffering from hunger and cold. The prisoners were shot, and then those who survived were finished off. After this, Reiser had no intention of remaining in the German army any longer. He wants to defect and calls Witzland and Muller to come with him. They accept his offer. The three of them enter Russian territory. There they find out the way to the airfield. On the route, they find many German corpses and take papers from them with notes on their wounds. This way they can pass themselves off as wounded and fly away from this place. When Witzland's group reaches the airfield, it turns out they are not the only ones there. Others have also faked combat wounds, but they are quickly identified and shot on sight. Witzland, Reiser, and Muller convince the inspectors that they are indeed wounded and make their way to the plane, except there were so many people eager to leave that they had to hold back the crowd. As a result, the plane flew away without them. There were no other planes, so all three had to return to the ranks of the German army. They went out to their people and huddled in the dugout until a plane flew over them. Food and rewards were thrown down from the plane. However, most of the soldiers simply throw their rewards away and rush over their food. This is where Hauptmann Haller appears. It turned out the food was destined for his warehouse. He tries to drive the soldiers away from the parcel, shoots Mueller, and gets himself shot. He tries to negotiate with the former deserters to bargain for his life, but they kill him. After learning that Haller has a food warehouse at the hideout, Witzland, Reiser, Rolleder, Otto, and Musk go there. Musk is gravely ill, so they have to carry him on their backs. The warehouse where they arrived was indeed filled with provisions. In one of the rooms, the Germans find Irina. Haller had tied her up on the bed so that they could take advantage of the girl at any moment. Upon discovering their find, Witzland's group decides to take Irina one by one. They first assign the lieutenant as their superior, while they go off for refreshments. Witzland takes a knife and cuts the rope with which Haller has tied the girl to the bed. He explains to her that he wants to sleep with the woman before he dies, but Irina is not going to give up without a fight. After beating her, Witzland still does not dare to take the girl by force. He forbade his fellow officers to take her as well. Hauptmann Musk falls ill, and Rolleder takes him into the fresh air. In the street, Musk dies. Rolleder, on the other hand, sees the general, officers, and soldiers coming out to the Russians with their hands up. Irina volunteers to take Witzland and Reiser to the Germans. However, as they cross the snow-covered steppe, they run into Soviet soldiers, who open fire on them. Irina is killed by her men, and Razor with Witzland freeze to death in the steppe. More than a million people died in the battle for Stalingrad, including Russians, Germans, Romanians, Italians, Hungarians, and Austrians. An army of 260,000 soldiers came here. 91,000 of them were captured. Only 6,000 Germans returned home. And that's where the movie ends. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to watch more movie recaps videos like this.